Hi, this is Trey. This is Paul. Sorry, Paul on this channel. Paul's views and welcome to Paul's views and opinions. So this is going to be my spoilers review of uh, Suicide Squad. Um, I went to see it today in 3D at around 11:30. Uh, I, overall, I enjoyed the movie. I gave it a 7.3 on my other channel, Trey Passers, uh, my Trey Passer channel. Uh, I'll leave a link to that review in the description box below if you want to see it. But this review is going to be going to have spoilers in it. Okay, so be prepared. Or for be forewarned, okay. Um, I like the movie overall. I just thought that the plot was weak, and the main main plot of this movie and the main villain of the movie is the Enchantress. Okay, now I I don't know that much about the Enchant Enchantress, the DC version. I know about the Marvel the Marvel version. You know the, the Enchantress, the blonde one with the that's a, a Asgardian and a, you know, with Thor and all that stuff. I know about her, but as far as I this as this uh, Enchantress. I didn't know that much about her going in, okay. And Cara Devine, I think that's her name. <laughs> I know I butchered that, but she plays the Enchantress, okay. And basically, uh, she they get Amanda Waller is basically using her because you know she's possessed. She possesses this. Uh, I forgot the the, actor, the uh, character's name, but she possesses her. And the way they control her is they have her heart. Uh, they have her heart, and that's how Amanda Waller controls her. Okay, and she's of course the human character of hers in love with Rick Flag. Now, as far as Rick Flag, I know Rick Flag, the actor who played Rick Flag, was trying to sell that that really trying to sell that he he was in love with with uh, the human part. But yeah, I didn't think they had that great chemistry. I I th did think uh, Joker and Harley had great chemistry, and the Joker in this movie is uh, played by is, is played by Jared Leto. He he's all in for Harley. He's not. You know, sometimes in the animated movie, animated TV show, he was Joker. The Joker treated Harley sometimes as an annoyance. Now he, you know, she was just a partner in crime, but she always like knew her place. Or he always put her in her place. In this movie, you could tell the Joker is all in with her. You know, you know, they show him. You know, you know, you know, they show the quick scene of them. You know, him interviewing her and and basically her falling under his sway. And you can tell by their you know the scenes they show of her and with them together in the club. That scene with Common, and of course the, the chase with Batman. That she's you know she's all in, and Joker's all in. And when, when um, she gets captured, and he goes nuts trying to find her. I mean he goes all in trying to find her, and so you can tell this Jared Leto, this Joker is all in for for Harley. Okay, and Jared Leto I thought did a good good portrayal of the Joker. He's not in the movies as much as I thought he was going to be in the movie. And I, for some reason, I thought it might be similar to Assault on Arkham, but David Ayer did a different type of version of uh, of, of the um, of that story, the Joker and Harley story. And again, like I said, this Jared Leto's Joker was all in for Harley Quinn. He was coming for her, and you could tell they actually cared about each other. And you can tell that towards the end, when they did this, uh, when the Enchantress was doing her uh, uh, mojo on the Suicide Squad to give them. You know, telling them to join her, and she give them what they want. And what Harley wanted was a normal life with the Joker, with kids and everything. So they were all in together. But anyway, but what I, again? I, I thought that the plot was weak. You know, that that the Enchantress she basically uh, freed her brother, uh, and basically she was she was going to take over the world. This is what they wanted to do. She was going to build this big device, and she was going to take over the world. And Suicide Squad. Was sent in. Actually, they were sent in first to rescue <laughs> Amanda Waller. Okay, and then they were sent to this try to stop the Enchantress. Okay, so, but I just thought that, that plot was just sort of weak. That they had the that the Enchantress was the big bad, and she was building this machine that was supposed to take over the world and all. I thought that was just sort of weak. Okay, and I and I and I was reading a thing. At first, I was thinking that maybe they cut some scenes and stuff, but I was reading. Uh, a little behind the scene thing and David Ayer said the cut that you see in the theaters that we saw in the theater that's his cut of the movie so I don't know if you'll get a maybe deleted scenes or something up but he, or an ultimate cut maybe you won't because David Ayer said this cut is his cut of the movie and I like the beginning of the movie where they were kind of giving you a, a play by play you know introducing Deadshot to you Harley Quinn and stuff and but again what I really really surprised me in this movie was El Diablo Jay Hernandez I didn't Think his character, you know, I saw the trailer and we saw that there was a little funny exchange with Will Smith's character, Deadshot. But I didn't think his character would have 
the depth that he had. You know, he was a guy that was, was a, you know, he did bad things, and, and he basically wanted to repent. And you could, t you could tell, and Jay Hernandez, I thought, gave a great performance, who made, actually made me care about his character, El Diablo. And, you know, he had that big climactic showdown with the Enchantress's brother at the end, which I thought was cool. And, like I said, he actually sacrificed. He actually, you know, sacrificed himself, and he, he really, you know, made me care about his character, which I didn't expect that going in. Okay, and I thought Will Smith was good in this movie. I thought he was... Okay, although, like uh, Grace Randall said in her review, I didn't understand what she meant, but now I understand what she meant, saying that um, Will Smith's character of Deadshot, they didn't make him really, I mean, he was a bad guy, you know, he killed guys, but he, they didn't really make him all bad. Like, there was a scene in there, of course, where where um, Joker comes to rescue Harley, and she's, you know, she's a hang, you know, they throw a rope down, and she's, she's hanging on the rope, and she's going away, and Amanda Waller tells Deadshot, listen, I'll, get, I'll let you see your daughter again and stuff. If you stop, you know, if you kill, you know, if you kill Harley, Harley Quinn, and he, and he looks like he's going to do it, and, you know, he shoots, and then for a minute, for a minute, I thought he might, he might have done it, but then you see, no, he didn't do it, you know, and then she, you know, she pretends like she's dead, and then she, you know, you know, act like she goes back to, you know, she, you know, she starts acting like she's, you know, she's, you know, she's, acts like she's dead, and then she, you know, she's, of course, she's alive, and then he says he missed, so they didn't really, you know, that would have been a dark turn and then it's Will Smith, so maybe they wouldn't they didn't want to go there that way to make that shot to make him really really a bad guy. He's like a, a bad guy that kills for money. Okay? But you know, Will Smith is a charismatic guy and I thought Will Smith was, was good in there. And I, again I thought Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn. I thought she was really good as well. Okay. And again, uh uh I forgot the actor uh who plays uh who played Killer Croc. I thought he was good too. I thought he was good and he was funny. He didn't have his main lines in this movie, but I thought he was good in his little moments and stuff. And I, and who else? I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Viola Davis, I absolutely loved his. She was a total badass, and and she just she killed it. And I should expect as much. Viola Davis is just a she's a great actress, and she you know she always gives her 100 uh, percent in anything she does. And who else? I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, Cara Deving as the Enchantress. I thought she was okay. I, th I thought her human side was sort of weak, you know, well, I guess her character's supposed to be weak, you know, because she has this thing that's possessed, you know, this spirit that's possessing her, okay, and, um, but towards the end of the movie, when they, when she's trying to attempt the Suicide Squad, and she's doing this, this funky kind of movement, that looks so, that looks so silly, that, that just looked, like, cringeworthy, you know, uh, yeah, I think David Ayer sort of said, you know what, maybe slow down with the, with the, you know, she just, I think she took a little bit over the top and he should have, should have tamed that down because that, that looked totally weird and totally cringeworthy, okay? And, oh yeah, uh, Jai Courtney is Captain Boomerang. I thought he was funny. And, and like I said, you could see in the, the trailers he was funny and, it, and he was funny in the movie. <laughs> and I wish they would have had more scenes with him and uh, uh, Katana, who I thought was great. The actress who played Katana, she, had, she didn't have that many lines, but I thought she was... She, she was a total badass as well, and I, I, I liked her character as well too, Katana. But she was, but she was kick ass. And uh, who else? I'm trying to think. Who else? Oh yeah, the Flash cameo. There was a Flash cameo in there. You know, that's how Captain Boomerang. You know, because in the beginning of the movie, uh, Amanda Waller explaining to the general, you know, how they captured the certain Suicide Squad members, and they show, you know, Captain Boomerang, you know, robbing a bank, and then he kills his partner, and then of course the Flash shows up, which I I forgot that he was in this movie. And I thought that was just a cool moment because that totally surprised me because I forgot he was in the movie. And I, I like when he showed up. That, that was really cool. Okay, and of course Batman is in this movie. And uh, I just thought he was in that, that one chase scene, but he's in the movie a lot more. He He's the one that actually captures uh, Deadshot. And of course with, with his daughter and stuff. And I thought that scene was really cool the way, they, the way they did it. Okay, I thought that was excellent. Okay, and of course uh, there was an after credit scene with Bruce Wayne going to a man of Waller and she gives him a folder. And of course it has the meta humans in it. And it has, you know, Flash in there and, um, Aqu you know, Aquaman. And then he says to man Waller, you know, shut your, she, he's basically telling her to shut down. He basically tells her to shut down Suicide Squad or me and my friends will, will shut it down for you, basically. Basically threatened. So I don't know if they'll have her, if they do a Justice League sequel or they'll have Justice League versus Suicide Squad. 
maybe that's why they laid that foundation out there. So maybe maybe you'll have a scene or, or of the, the Justice League movie two or something where they we see the Justice League run into Suicide Squad. Maybe they will. But I think maybe that's why they made that down. But I think they also did just to so you know that Bruce, you know, how Bruce finds these meta humans. You know, she basically tracked them down for him. So he had so when you see Justice League, now you know how he finds them. So I guess you know that's why they put that in there. And but like I said, uh, David Ayer, I have to blame him for the plot, which I thought was again sort of weak, and he wrote it. So I have to give it to him. Would I like to see a sequel to Suicide Squad? Sure, but I would like to give somebody else a chance that could maybe uh, write a better script for it, or maybe let Jeff Johns write the script for it. Okay, and uh, and get, get somebody else to direct it. So I just thought the plot was this weak. The characters were good. And the actors gave good performances, but I thought that plot, plot was weak of Enchantress being the villain and her basically freeing her brother and then she's going to build a machine so she can take over the world and Suicide Squad has to go in and stop her. Uh, this That was so weak. I was expecting something more spectacular, I think. I think that's what I was, I guess maybe I was too hyped for it, but I just thought that was, that plot line was sort of weak. But again, my surprises in this movie again was El Diablo, Jay Hernandez. I really wasn't didn't expect much for him going in, and he really, I really, he became one of my character that that surprised me that I liked as much. I didn't realize I was going to like his character El Diablo, and as much because he's a man trying to redeem himself, okay, and he comes to care about the Suicide Squad, and I liked, you know, how he, you know he sacrificed himself, and they showed the flashbacks and stuff, and he was trying to redeem himself, and so his story actually moved me. Okay, which I really liked. And like I said, Joker and, and Harley Quinn, like I said in my spoilers, spoiler free review, this thing was a love story. Joker was all in on, for Harley. Okay, and once he got captured, he, you know, he went to lengths to find out where she was, okay, and to find her and rescue her. Okay, and then he even, he did that, and then he came back later toward, you know, the end of the movie to rescue her again. And, and again, his his Joker was all in for, Har for Harley, and I thought they had I thought Margot Robbie and uh, Jared Leto had good chemistry in this movie. And of course, she kind of flirts with Deadshot and they have their little uh, interactions which I th thought were good and stuff. And uh, again, Captain Jack Courtney was good as Captain Boomerang again. Uh, I'm trying to think, oh yeah, Rick Flagg, uh, I forgot the actor, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, the actor who played Rick Flagg, I thought he was good, but him and uh, Enchantress, oh, the June, their, their chemistry was, uh, uh, but, I, I did like the actor. I do like the actor who plays uh, Rick Flag. I thought he's he's a good actor. Okay. Um, so overall, again, I gave it a seven point three. Uh, like I said, I thought the characters were good. I thought the actors did good performances. Okay, but I just thought the overall plot was weak. Okay, which is you know unfortunate. But like I said, I still like I said in my spoiler preview, I do recommend it. Okay, if you're a fan of the characters and stuff you want to see them. I think, I think you like seeing the characters on screen in real life in live action, okay? And you like the performances, but I think overall plot, you know, the action was good, but the overall plot to me was just is this weak to me? It just didn't didn't move me. I guess so I'm trying. I I expected I guess more more of it to move me. I think that's what I was expecting. I guess uh, you know I, that's why I gave it a seven point three. You know, if the, if the plot was better, I think I would have gave it an eight. For sure, but I just the plot to me was just was weak. And like I said, would I like to see a, series, a sequel to the Suicide Squad movie? Yes, but definitely get a get somebody else to write it. I, I just didn't like the plot David Ayer came up with. Uh, get another, get somebody else to write it. Maybe get Jeff Johns to write it or somebody else. I just thought the plot was weak. Okay, I really did. Okay, but overall I did enjoy it. But again, plot is weak. That's one of my main gripes. With the plot was weak. Uh, Jared Leto Joker wasn't in it as much as I thought he was, but I did like his performance as a Joker. He, you know, his, his Joker was crazy and and completely all in for for Harley Quinn. And I thought Margot Robbie was great as Harley Quinn. She was fantastic every time she was on screen. Couldn't take my eyes off her. I thought Will Smith did a good job as Deadshot. Uh, Jai Courtney was good, but Jay Hernandez really surprised me how good he was. El, El Diablo. Uh, uh, Viola Davis is uh, Amanda Waller. I thought she was great. And of course, the Flash cameo I love. Bruce Wayne 
at the end, at the credit scene. Uh, uh, it's Batman. I liked his scenes in the movie as well. And overall, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing a sequel as long as I think they get a uh, get a different writer to write it. So I think in that way you get a I think you'll get a better story, somebody that can give you a, a, a stronger plot, and that then I'm all in. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is my it's been my spoilers review. Uh, Suicide Squad. Let me know what you think of it. Feel free to leave comments down below. If you like this review, please hit the subscribe button down below. I also have a link to my spoilers, no, spoiler free review on my other channel, Trade Pass channel. That link will also be in the description box below. So if you want to check that out as well. This is Paul saying so long and take care. I uh, guess I said 7.3, right? 7.3. Hi, I just wanted to add one little thing. I forgot to remember this one. Um, uh, I watch, uh, you know, Beyond the Trailer, Grace uh, Randolph. I like her channel a lot. She does movie math as well. And I like her content for the most part. But there was one thing that she said that in her review of um, Suicide Squad, which she basically uh, said, you know, because they, they said that there was some booze when Zack Snyder was at Comic-Con, you know, they introduced all the directors of the movies, and they said there was some booze there. And then she basically said, uh, you know, he deserved it. And then... She, she said uh, that you got to blame him for Suicide Squad. First of all, he didn't direct it, so I don't know, or or write it, so I don't know why you're going to blame Zack Snyder for 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 Suicide Squad, you know, you know, the success or a failure of it, or what do you think of it? You know, he's, he, he didn't write the movie or direct it, so I don't know how you're going to blame Zack Snyder for it. I think that was silly. And also, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was the Rotten Tomato score, which was 29% the other day. I don't know if it's went up or down. Like I said, I don't even I don't check Rotten Tomatoes at all for anything. But um, no way this movie is a twenty nine nine percent. Okay, trust me, it's it's not. Cause this movie, this movie, trust me, this movie's not the best, but it's but it's definitely not the worst movie ever. Okay, that's just retarded. I saw again. I saw the comic book cast to um, had it, the title, you know, worst movie ever. That was that was ridiculous. To even say that, come on, that's absolutely asinine, okay, in my opinion, okay, <laughs> um, what I, what I said, trust me, there's a lot of movies that are a lot worse than this movie, which is, I don't think this movie is that, <laughs> that bad, I just think the plot is, you know, the, the plot is weak, but it's nowhere near the worst movie ever, okay, and I think that's just uh, ridiculous, if I was to rank them, uh, DCU films, I would rank Batman v Superman. But again, this is my opinion. Batman v Superman first, then Man of Steel, and then Suicide Squad. Okay, in terms of my liking them. I would rank them that way, in that order. Okay, so, but the worst movie ever is, that's just ridiculous. And that 29% for Rotten Tomatoes is, is asked to me, that's, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. Okay, that's absolutely asinine. Okay, again, just my opinion. Okay, take care.